Hey, welcome back, CISSP wannabes. I'm Colin Weaver. You're watching the CISSP questions of the day. Two questions. Here comes number one. Which of the following would not be considered an indicator or an indication of attack? I'm going to put up a bunch of answer choices. I want you to pick two of them. Click pause. Give me a lot of words. Think about it. When you're ready, click play. We can walk through it. Answer choice number one says, uh, detection of an ongoing spear phishing campaign against employees. Uh, that is very much an indication of attack, okay? And we are looking, say, this appears that an attack is going on right now. And so an act, detecting an active spear phishing campaign fits that description. Answer choice number two says that you have a network-based intrusion detection system that identifies a buffer overflow exploits on a packet coming inbound to your network. Uh, that is also an indication of attack. Okay? It is not an indication of compromise. Okay? It's not prelude to an attack. It's an indication of an attack. Hey, somebody's doing a buffer overflow or trying to do a buffer overflow exploit. It does not suggest that, you, that the buffer overflow exploit actually worked. You've just detected one. So that's still an indication of attack, not an indication of compromise. Choice number three says that you have an unusual amount of SSH traffic leaving your network. Uh-oh. The traffic's leaving your network. It's going out, not trying to come in. This, unfortunately, is an indication of compromise. If you have a particular system or segment of your network that doesn't normally send a lot of SSH traffic, and now it is, that's an indication that something bad may have already happened. So that's an indication of compromise. That's one of the answer choices that we're looking for. It's not an indication that you're under attack. It's an indication that somebody attacked you and was successful. You are now compromised and they are taking advantage of that compromise. How about the next choice, which is, says that you've got log files that indicate that the same username tried to log in to 20 different servers in a 20 second window. Nope, that doesn't mean you've been compromised. That very much indicates that somebody is trying to attack you. So, or is attacking you. So that is, that's an indication of an attack. Okay, it's not an indication of compromise. The log file simply said they tried to log in. It didn't say that they did log in. So, um, nope, not one of the answer choices. That leaves us with the last choice. And it says that a zero day exploit has been identified for a piece of software that's commonly used in your enterprise. Um, is that an indication of attack? No. Is it an indication of compromise? No but it is very much falls into the category of a prelude to an attack because now that you know this thing's out there and you know that you are not currently protected against it, the likelihood that something could be coming is legit. So you may want to step up your efforts to go in and try and look for indications of attack or compromise, uh, but also to be able to go in and uh, see if there's any mitigating steps that you could take to reduce the likelihood of an attack actually leading to a compromise. So. Uh, so the two that we had here, one was an indication of compromise, which was SSH traffic leaving your network uh, in, in a way that you consider abnormal. And the other one was realizing that there's a zero day exploit out there for which you have no defense and um, nobody's actually come at you with it. But the fact that it's out there in the wild means that that attack could be coming soon. Question number two today is incident handling processes require prioritization in order to make sure that you are addressing uh, incidents in a, an appropriate manner and order. My question for you is, in the items that I'm going to show you here, which of them is not a factor in prioritization? There's your answer choices. Think about it. Click pause if you need to. When you're ready, click play. We walk. How about answer choice number one, the functional impact on the environment or on the enterprise. And that is very much something that you're going to go in and consider. What impact does this particular incident have on the functionality of the business right now? Very frequently, we'd be categorized as, you know, none, low, medium, high. Uh, and that's very much going to help contribute to and dictate uh, what your prioritization is going to be as far as a response. How about the second option, which says you're going to look at the information impact. Uh, this is basically asking you, uh, how does this pertain to confidentiality, integrity, and availability? Have you had a loss of PII? Have you had a breach of, uh, say, uh, integrity of data? Or have you had a breach of, the, say, the proprietary or some proprietary data that's on your system? Okay, so what is the impact right now of this particular incident on CIA? That is also very much going to dictate how you prioritize responses. How about the detectability as a tool for controlling your prioritization? No. Um, 
Certainly, you want to address and evaluate detectability, but not from this perspective of going in and saying, how are we going to respond? Because by implication, you've already detected. Now you know that you need to respond. So detection is a thing that occurred in the past. Okay? And you want to make sure that you have adequate mechanisms of detection, how detectable is a particular type of, a, of an attack. But in this circumstance, because it's already happened, it's not something that's going to dictate your prioritization of how you're going to respond to it. So that is the right answer that we're looking for here. And that means that the last one, which is recoverability, which is your evaluation of what is it going to take to recover from this incident? How much is involved? What do we need as far as resources? Can we do this in-house? Are we going to do it in-house with the tools that we've got? Or are we going to be able to do it in-house, but we got to, we're going to have to go and get some stuff? Or are we actually going to require external parties to come and facilitate this and help? Okay, Those kinds of considerations are also going to play into how you're going to prioritize responses. So functionality, the information impact, and recoverability. Those are the critical consideration factors for how you determine what your, your triage or your hierarchy is when you're responding to events. Um, detectability is not on that list. Okay, two more questions complete. Bye.